Hoosier fans, welcome back to another season of Under the Hood, presented by your Central Indiana Ford dealers, proud sponsor of IU Football. Reminder to get out there and visit your local Central Indiana Ford dealer today. It is game week, and we are ready to see this Hoosier team hit the rock and take on FIU coming up to kick off this 2024 season. One uh, that is filled with so much excitement, and uh, obviously a big reason for that excitement is this new era of Hoosier football, and it is our great pleasure and, and what an honor for us uh, to get a chance to begin this season of Under the Hood by welcoming head coach Kurt Signetti to the program. Coach, uh, I mean, I just, I, I can't tell you about the excitement uh, that we felt. I know we talked about that a lot, but I'm telling you, as we get closer, it just feels like it keeps building and building, and I know you're kind of starting to get a better glimpse of what this team is going to look like. What has you fired up about this team right now? Well, I think we've made uh, great progress, really, as a program and a team. And uh, still, we've got a way to go yet. we got some things we've got to cover and get better at. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing us play. You learned anything uh, about the way this team handles its business, you know, going from spring now with, with you know, almost, you know, 15 practices, and now we're, we're, we're getting close to, to that number. We're hitting that number here in the fall. Um, is there anything that stood out to you about the way this team operates? Well, I, I think – that we're taking a business-like approach to it and we're more consistent play in play out day in day out start to finish not we're not there yet and you're always you know striving for perfection and then when you have a you know good play or a good day you got to have the right mindset where you can come back and do it again because you either do get better or worse so handling success and failure uh play and play out day in day out game in game out it's a big part of it. And those are the intangibles and the, and the mindset that you've got to create in the football team, having high standards, never lowering your standards and finding the edge. And coach, it's well-documented. We've talked about your penchant and, and ability and track record of turning around programs and doing it quickly and, and having a winning season in year one, two part question here. First part, were there common threads with some of those teams and some of those programs, whether it be roster composition, strengths or toughness, togetherness, were there common threads with those teams in year one that allowed that kind of early success? Well, yeah, they, I think they bought in and played the way we wanted to play, you know, physical, tough, uh, a get after kind of team uh, that kept taking it to the opposition. And, uh, you know, in all those places, we won some close games, uh, some big time comeback victories, uh, and which developed uh, belief and confidence and momentum and, and snowball. Um, so, but I think this camp is very similar to a, a lot of the other camps. What's different is now with the portal, you got all the new guys. And then, uh, then you have even more new guys that come in after spring ball that weren't in. So, uh, you know, that part of it's a little bit different, but, uh, you know, I think we've made a lot of progress and, uh, now, you know, we've got to be able to handle all the, all, all the things the season brings in terms of success, failure, adversity, uh, and be resilient, relentless, and uh, not be affected by circumstances of the game, noise and clutter after a game, et cetera. And, and the second part of that question you kind of touched on there a little bit is, is, you know, are you beginning to see some of those hallmarks with this team, right? Some of those mile markers that you can point to for progress in in turning this thing around and finding a way to win in year one and is that something that you kind of continue to build especially in year one as you get through you know let's say the early part of this season absolutely it's day-to-day week-to-week process uh no question about it and and i have seen uh you know the things we're looking for from this team uh but you know you got to sh- keep strengthening those the jmu crew coming in has really helped coming from a championship culture and then some of the other new guys from winning programs that have great attitudes. And we've had a lot of the guys that have returned, uh, you know, I mean, the offensive line, you know, they're always blue collar uh, and with Bob and, uh, and, but, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of progress and, uh, but still ways to go. Yeah. And coach, when you think about, you know, where you were when you left the spring, right, there was still a lot of work to be done roster wise. And you made a lot of that, uh, a lot of movement there, you know, in the time between spring and fall, um, if you compare it now to where we were in the spring and, and where you're at now, are there, there are players in position groups that have, have taken a step forward in your mind? Well, I think the defensive line for sure has taken a big step forward and needs to be a strength to this football team. 
uh, because, you know, defense travels and it all starts up front. And uh, we need them uh, to be great every day, every game, every play, uh, and play with a high standard. And Pat Koontz, you know, he does a good job of making sure in Buddha that that happens. But uh, that, that group looks a lot different than it did in the spring. Yeah, and, and as you look at that unit as a whole on the defensive side, what stands out to you about the way that, that they're going to try to attack offenses? Well, I think that, you know, our goal is to be really good against the run and be disruptive and put pressure on the quarterback. And I think we have the ability to do that. Now we just got to hold up on the back end. Yeah, exactly right. Um, and, you know, that I was going to hit on that too because, you know, you, you go back and look at it historically – your defenses with Coach Haynes have been able to stop the run and they've been able to get after the passer and wreak a little bit of that havoc, right, in the opposing team's uh, backfield. Um, do you feel like you, you have the, the personnel to get after the passer that way, the way you have in the past? Do you, or do you have to scheme some of that up as well? And is it kind of a combination of both guys winning their one-on-ones and then putting them in a position maybe to, to find some advantageous matchups as well? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, uh, you know, you're always going to look for to create – positive one-on-one -on -one matchups or free a guy up on a blitz. Uh, so it, it's always changing. There's a lot of moving parts with our defense and week to week, uh, there will always be new looks. So I do think we have the ability to put pressure on the quarterback. Uh, you know, I think we've got some guys that can rush the passer and, uh, and stop the run. So, and I feel uh, really good about our corner situation, a lot better than the spring. Uh, you know, with Pons and uh, Jameer Johnson uh, has really had a nice camp. So, um, you know, I think that group uh, has definitely looks a lot different than it did in the spring. And it sounds like, uh, you know, they've been tough covers, uh, tough, tough outs uh, as you've gone through camp based off uh, some of the things that, that you've said following practices. So how much better do you feel like that's made or, or how, how much more improvement has that fostered in the offense and in the quarterback position and the wide receivers to have that kind of competition level out on the edge uh, at corner? Well, uh, no doubt. Iron sh sharpens iron. And uh, the competition has been good up front, O-line, D-line, receiver, corner. And competition makes you better. So, and there, you know, there's some positions on this team where we have more depth and more com uh, competition. And there's a couple of positions where we don't quite have the depth maybe you'd like to have, and we're still working on developing that depth. So, uh, you know, but camp camp's been good. Practices improved every day, and uh, starting, finishing, uh, playing hard, playing play out. Uh, getting guys to do their job is always the key to the drill. Uh, you know, one play at a time, 11 guys doing their job. I say it all the time. It's not, a, not addition, it's multiplication. And then, Coach, you know, from the quarterback spot, I think, you know, I think we always just assume quarterbacks step into a leadership role, although we probably shouldn't assume that, right? It is something that has to be earned and something that, uh, you know, the respect that you have to earn from your teammates. Do you feel like you're getting that from, from the quarterback here early on, especially, you know, when you got a guy like Curtis coming in in relatively short order, kind of yeah. getting, getting acclimated with these guys? Well, I think all quarterbacks lead in a different way, depending on their personality. Uh, it's not always talk. Uh, sometimes it's through their actions or their credibility uh, or their performance. And, uh, you know, Curtis is a guy, he's not the most vocal guy in the world. Uh, but, you know, he, he earns his respect by the way he approaches his craft and the success he has on the field. Now we get into the season, we start having success and more and more of that, you know, he develops more and more uh, credibility with his teammates. I mean, he's very highly respected as it is right now. So um, the most important thing to me is that he plays quarterback real well. And if he does that, then everybody's going to follow. Rest falls in line, right? Um, man, the, the skill position group is so exciting to me, you know, from the tight end spot to the wide receiver spot to the depth at running back. And I know you're going to rotate and roll through those guys. Um, just looking at that from the wide receiver spot, uh, how many guys do you envision kind of rolling through and having significant roles? Uh, from that group probably six or seven because we are deep and uh you know you want those guys playing fast all the time and uh you you roll them you get them playing fast you get into a two minute one minute drill roll them you know keep them playing fast and uh because we have a lot of capable guys out there 
And then, Coach, I, I know the, the Nick Kidwell injury was uh, was one that was tough to handle. Your personal relationship with him and all that he's already come back from. But there was already some competition at the other guard spot, right? How, how has the, the Kidwell injury kind of affected the competition overall in the interior of that offensive line? Yeah. Well, I look back, you know, last five years, we've lost the All-American, All-Conference player, usually up front, defense or offense, every year since 19 and had to overcome it and did. And, uh, you know, you got uh, Drew Evans, Bray Lynch, and Tyler Stevens. They're all capable guys. Tyler Stevens has played a lot of football. And uh, Lynch and Evans have been here and have developed. So uh, they're capable of doing the job, and uh, they're getting better every day. And then, Coach, uh, you know, you bring in – we talked about the transfers a lot, but, you, you know, had a really talented group of true freshmen coming in as well. A lot of them we saw a little bit in the spring. Um, do, do you envision – a number of freshmen having significant roles, true freshmen this year as you, as you move forward, or is that something that's still yet to be determined and developed? I, I don't really see that right now. I, I, we're a pretty veteran team. We got 31 or 32 seniors on this team because we had to hit the portal so hard last year. So uh, off the top of my head, I don't really see a freshman, uh, maybe a redshirt freshman that's been here, uh, you know, playing significantly at least early in the year. And lastly here, Coach, um, some technology advancements on the sidelines this year. I know you guys have been working with the headset and the helmet communication. Um, but I did want to talk to you about the tablets uh, here briefly because I know I know you're a film guy. I know you're a tape guy. Right. How much of that are you going to be looking at uh, as the offense and defenses come off the field now that you have access to it on the yeah. sideline? Well, that'll be more the assistance on each side of the ball because I'll be on the offensive headset when the offense is on the field and the defense headset when the defense is on the field. And uh, that's new, and we've had some uh, practice at it in, in our scrimmages. And, uh, you know, uh, from what the information we have is uh, you, you got to use it. You, ca you can't get too absorbed in it. Uh, you got to, you know, spend some time on the tablet, spend some time on what's coming up, adjustments, and be ready to go. Uh, but it, it'll help. Yeah. And then lastly, how how is your, you know, your – quote unquote, green dot players, how they kind of handled getting the play calls in from the sidelines into the helmet and filtering that out through the, the rest of the units. Yeah, th I think that's been really beneficial. And, um, it, you know, it's a great technology to have and you just hope it never goes down. That's, that's right. That's right. I know you're prepared for uh, for all eventual possibilities as well, though. Coach, uh, this has been so much fun. You've been so gracious with your time. We appreciate it. Can't wait to see uh, everybody out there packing the rock on Saturday uh, as you guys get rolling against FIU. Uh, it's going to be a fun year, Coach. Thanks again. Thanks, Rhett. And there we go. First installment of Under the Hood presented by your Central Indiana Ford dealers. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you next week.